For the past year, uh, Takeo has been joined in his laboratory by a, a colleague from the uh, University of Kyoto who is uh, a visiting professor here and uh, a research scientist at the University of Kyoto. This is Harry, Kasa Harry Asada, who will speak today to the development of the direct drive arm of, of radical new technology for a robotic arm. Harry? Thank you, John. I'm working on the direct drive arm project with the Takeo Kanadi. Um, <clears throat> this project is one of the projects supported by the Office of Naval Research. Uh, the goal of this project is to develop a high performance manipulator which is capable of uh, fast speed and accurate manipulation as well as the uh, dexterous motion. Now, the most of uh, industrial robots for small to medium duties are driven by electric motors. However, the torque of the uh, conventional servo motor is too small that we need to have a transmission mechanism between the motor and the alloy. The transmission mechanism is the device to uh, increase the torque and uh, transmit the power from motor to, uh, to the load, uh, such as gears, uh, uh, lead screws, harmonic drives, and chain and so on. Unfortunately, uh, these transmission mechanisms unavoidably leads to have some of the problems listed here. Backlash, large friction, low stiffness, and low reliability. Then the resultant performance of the arm is very poor in terms of the positioning accuracy, dynamic response, and the toe control. And this toe control is a very, very important aspect for the feasible application when it's robot to uh, 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 precise handling and the uh, assemblies. However, the present robot is very poor in controlling the toe. And also some of the transmission mechanisms, we need to have some regular maintenance to reduce the, uh, to adjust the backlash. So it's, uh, it is known in this sense too. Then we um, propose a direct drive arm, which consists of a series of direct drive joints uh, as shown in this figure. Uh, we use high performance thin ring motor, which consists of uh, our rotor, stator, and rushing. The stator is attached to this inner case, the, and rotor is attached to this uh, uh, outer case. The feature is this rotor is directly coupled to the joint axis, and it's, rotate, um, it's rotated directly by the torque developed between the stator and the rotor. We do not use any transmission mechanism. Therefore, the performance is excellent as listed in this uh, slide. Backlash is essentially zero. And friction is also small, only existing at the bearings to support the, the uh, joint. And stiffness is also high and reliability is so high because of the simple mechanism. The resultant uh, performance of the arm is excellent in, in terms of fine motion, per speed, fast speed, and pure torque control without being disturbed by the friction of the transmission mechanism. And also the arm has very simple uh, mechanism and does not contain any uh, uh, part uh, we need uh, some regular maintenance, so it's almost made, uh, like, uh, maintenance free. Okay. Now, can I have the first slide? It's on. It's on. Thanks. Okay. Um, this is the uh, the first prototype of the jet drive um, developed at the Carnegie Mellon University. Um, uh, this arm has six degrees of freedom, all of which uh, articulated direct drive joint. Uh, from the upper upper plane, the first joint is a rotational joint about this 
but or not. So it was a full, full list uh, frame about this. The second uh, second joint is the also a rotational joint about this horizontal line. And the third and fourth joint rotate this forearm uh, about the, uh, the center of this upper arm and also about the uh, uh, this this line, so it uh, just looks like uh, the uh, rotation and uh, bending motion of the elbow. Part. And the fifth and sixth joint rotate this wrist work uh, in this way and in this way. So it's pretty speedy. The total arm length is about uh, 1.7 meter, and the uh, movable part from here to the tip is about one meter. And the maximum payload at tip of the arm is about six, uh, 13 pound, six kilogram, including a gripper at tip of the arm. Uh, this is the uh, shoulder, uh, shoulder part. Uh, here you can see that bare water, which consists of a stator and rotor and working here. Uh, this uh, to uh, to get the uh, huge torque to rotate this whole arm directly, we use a large diameter motor. It's about a 60 centimeter, uh, two feet, 60, 60 centimeter. And the peak torque, uh, maximum torque of this motor is about a new, uh, 200 newton meter. It's uh, uh, 150 foot pound, I think. And the, uh, in this case, uh, this second joint, the uh, uh, the diameter is about uh, 35 centimeters, and the peak torque is about uh, 135 newton meter. Uh, this is another view of the jet drive arm. Um, uh, this is shoulder, and this is elbow, and this is the uh, wrist. Uh, we need to have uh, uh, not only high torque, but also lightweight motor to drive elbow and wrist work. Because uh, if the motor is uh, heavy, they give a very big load for the uh, shoulder joint. So we need to have a lightweight motor as well as the high torque. And uh, we use the, um, a new type of motor using a new type of uh, uh, magnet called uh, samarium cobalt permanent magnet. Uh, the maximum magnetic energy uh, of the samarium cobalt magnet is about three to ten times larger than the than that of the conventional uh, ferrite or nickel magnet. So we can have a, a very high torque motor with light weight. Uh, this is the elbow part. We use the uh, samarium cobalt magnet motor here, the diameter is about uh, 25 centimeters, and the maximum peak torque is uh, uh, 54 newton meter uh, with the uh, 5 kilogram uh, weight. And also we have, uh, 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 this is the wrist work, the wrist joint. Uh, the diameter of the motor is about 8 centimeters, and peak torque is about 7 newton meter. Okay, this is the overall view of the system, including our controller here. Here we have a, a, a servo amplifiers uh, the, whose peak current is about 17 amperes, and here we have a computer dedicated to, to control this arm, and some other circuits uh, here. Okay. Oh, let's quit this one. Okay, now, we go back to uh, uh, OHP. Now, we look at the control problem of the arm and the evaluate the performance. Um, the, the first issue, maybe this is the uh, most important issue, is the low damping of the jet drive joint because the, uh, we eliminated all the reducers 
so the, the arm can move very fast. However, it tends to show her to a damping. And also, uh, direct coupling reduces the uh, friction at the electric joint, and the uh, low friction leads to the poor damping because the uh, friction, uh, especially cool friction, applies, applies some uh, break to the joint. So we need to solve this problem, uh, how to increase the damping of the each joint control system. Um, this is the one of the experimental result on the our first joint uh, frequency response. Uh, this is the uh, gain curve. This is the phase curve. Uh, since the uh, inertial load about this first joint varies depending on the arm configuration, so we uh, acquired various data for various um, configuration. In any case, the uh, phase of uh, the, the phase curve does not exceed minus 180 degrees. So um, I think we can well identify this system as a second order system as shown in this in this equation. So and what we uh, what we want to do is to evaluate this uh, damping question uh, uh, in comparison with the inertial load J. And the uh, ratio between J and C is equal to the time constant of the system. And this time constant is, uh, can be figured out from the uh, uh, body diagram of the system. Here we can see your uh, corner frequency, 1.7 radian per second, and it, this uh, it corresponds to the time constant of three seconds, more than three seconds. It is enormously, extraordinarily large value. So the system has very poor damping in comparison with the natural load J. So natural load is very large. Uh, rather than the uh, damping coefficient. This is the, another example on joint four to drive this elbow curve. And it, it has also very large uh, time constant 0 0.4 second that is uh, also too large to control the, this joint uh, sufficient tree. So the thing is, we need to increase the damping to grab the, to control the extra, uh, the extra joint uh, uh, session tree. Uh, now we look at the velocity fever compensation. Velocity fever compensation is a straightforward way to increase damping. And the, however, the, in case of a geared motor, uh, we measured velocity at the shaft of the motor before the speed is reduced. However, in case of direct drive joint, it's rather difficult to measure the velocity because the uh, uh, speed of motor is as slow as the uh, link motion. So we use a very high res uh, resolution shaft encoder to measure uh, slower speed uh, movement. Um, Kasuri Rangan, who is a graduate student working on this project, uh, designed and they made a special circuit to uh, measure the uh, uh, slower speed, slower speed uh, joint uh, velocity angle, uh, which covers from two degrees per second minimum speed to, uh, this is the uh, uh, measurable uh, minimum speed and the maximum speed is 180 degrees uh, per second and also for the last two joints it covers 4 degrees per second to 1 revolution per second within within the something interval just 1 millisecond I think this is a very good uh, uh, velocity measurement circuit we actually install this uh, system 
to this feedback, just the feedback loop, and evaluate the uh, uh, performance of the just the feedback. Here we have a, again we have a frequency response of the first joint. The corner frequency used to be uh, here is now about 10 radium per second, which gives you the time constant about half second. So the improvement is that remarkable. And also we have a, a remarkable improvement on joint four. Uh, it used to be uh, the, the time constant of joint four used to be 0 0.465 second is now. Uh, 0.117 seconds is very first. Okay, now I show you a step response of the uh, some of the joint of the jet drag arm. Uh, the first one is the, um, the joint run, that's the largest joint. And the second one is joint four, that's the elbow joint. The last one is joint six, the wrist work with the three pound uh, payload keep up the arm. Um, uh, these, uh, these three curves show the procedure to adjust the gain of position feedback loop. Uh, since the overshoot is not desirable in most of the uh, robots, so we uh, turn out the system so that the uh, damping factor is between 0 0.9 to 1, that is the critical damping. So we have a no overshoot good response that's shown here. Okay, to evaluate the response, we use the uh, delay time TD. Delay time is the time required for time uh, step response to reach 50% of the uh, final value and uh, in case of joint four, that's the elbow joint, has a very small uh, delay time, just 82 milliseconds. And joint six, that is the last joint, has only 57 milliseconds. It's a, a very, very fast uh, response. And uh, in case of the no load uh, condition, this last joint has only 25 millisecond uh, delay time. So we can say the direct drive um, has a very, very good, uh, excellent performance in terms of the dynamic response. Even in joint, joint one, uh, which has a 365 millisecond delay time, uh, which is the fast enough for in most of the application. Uh, the next slide shows you uh, um, the experiment of positioning accuracy. Okay, uh, this is these are histograms of the uh, positioning error uh, when the arm moves from the uh, the same initial position to the same uh, destination again and again. Okay, uh, these are histograms of uh, obtained more than 50, uh, no, uh, more than 20, uh, 200 uh, trials. And the, uh, uh, these arrows show the mean, and the average of the uh, positioning error. And also, sigma gives you the standard deviation of the error. Okay. Uh, the, to, in, uh, to improve the steady state error, we use the uh, phase lag compensation, which increases the feedback gain 10 times larger than the uh, uh, in, uh, the usual case. And the, uh, the improvement of the positioning accuracy is remarkable because the, in case of the uh, joint six, uh, the offset, steady state offset, is only 0 0.086 degree. And even in case of joint one, uh, it has a 0 0.287 degree offset. And the, on the other hand, standard deviation is excellent because, the, uh, for instance, joint six has only 0 0.003 degree standard deviation. It's, a, it's incredible value. 
And also joint four has 0 0.005 degree standard deviation. The reason why the, this jet drive arm has such a good repeatability is that the uh, jet drive joint does not contain any uncertain factors such as the friction at the uh, gears or deflection at the uh, uh, steel belt or uh, chain. So uh, it shows that you are very good with the PSD. Okay. Um, finally, I talk about the uh, multi-input, multi-output control briefly. Um, the previous discussion are all on the single link, uh, single joint drive system. However, the actual manipulator has much more complicated behaviors. Uh, here, this is the equation of motion of the mechanical arm, general mechanical arm. And the, uh, the tau is the applied tau at each joint. And the, uh, this is the first term is the inertial term, and the second term is Coriolis and the centrifugal forces, and the third is gravity and the massive friction. Okay, um, the, uh, as you can see here, the arm has interaction between uh, multiple joints. And if you move this, this joint, also this, this joint moves. And also, uh, uh, the second term is much more complicated uh, because the, uh, okay, uh, if you move this joint, this link has uh, uh, cent uh, the some centri centrifugal force uh, acts on this link, it's moved in this way. And also, uh, if you move this link during the movement of this joint this way, then we have a Coriolis force here. Uh, and, and this second term is proportional with the product of angular velocity. And the jet drive arm moves very fast, so we need to compensate this kind of complicated uh, behavior too. Um, this is our algorithm uh, feed. Uh, then we uh, propose a feed for the compensation. Uh, the algorithm is this. Uh, first, you give the uh, set of points from here to here, and then interpolate these points by a smooth curve, which is differentiable up to uh, second order. Then you get the theta, theta dot, theta double dot. And you substitute these values to the equation motion and give the uh, uh, tau, tau i, and then so you obtain uh, the torque, the trajectory of torque, as well as the trajectory of position. And this is the uh, block diagram of feed forward and the feedback control system. You give the uh, 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 both position and torque uh, input to the system in the sa at the same time. And the, uh, uh, this procedure, uh, which pro uh, derives the uh, torque from theta and theta dot, theta two dot, is just the, the inverse process as we have usually. Namely, give torque, uh, the, you know, when the torque, uh, the input is torque and the output is theta. Okay, so we call this process inverse dynamics or inverse inverse process. Okay, um, uh, this this uh, computed toe gives you a driving toe to move the the arm along this position trajectory if uh, the uh, identification of the system is perfect and there's no. Uh, uh, noise applied to this system. Okay. Uh, however, we need to know the uh, equation of, equation motion of this uh, arm precisely. So uh, we computed the moment of inertia and the mass of the uh, joint uh, respectively. Um, uh, this figure shows you the dis disconnected links. Uh, the uh, uh, one of the advantage of jet drag joint is that the uh, we, we can get a very precise model of the mechanical arm because the arm does not have uh, uncertain factors. So we compute the moment of inertia and the mass of the 
uh, each link as listed in this in this figure. Uh, we are now implementing this feed forward compensation to the React Drive R. Um, we hope that uh, will improve the uh, response much more, and the, um, uh, we can show you a much more fast and precise response uh, to you. Sure. Um, now we also have uh, some simulation package of the ARM dynamics. Uh, new source and the web partner and the uh, supervised by the team of Canada, they uh, develop this kind of simulator on personal computer power. This is the uh, uh, three-dimensional display of, of the direct drive ARM. And next one is, uh, this is the car display and Brunel. Uh, this is the uh, part and display of the R. Uh, here you can see a uh, uh, display of code or other uh, useful information on uh, ARM dynamics is shown. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I think I have to stop my talk here. Um, we uh, here we have uh, two kinds of technical reports. One is on the design, the other is on the control. And the, um, uh, this first issue is now available, and this second issue will be uh, available in a month. And if you need to know the more uh, further detail, please ask me. Okay, thank you. Yes. What kind of uh, decoder do you use on this? Uh, uh, that's an optical shaft encoder. Optical shaft encoder, but uh, it has a very high precision. Uh, optical one? Or? Yeah, optical. Is optical. it an optical or an incremental? Uh, okay, uh, we use the incremental type encoders for uh, <coughs> joint one, joint three, joint five and six, and the joint two and joint four. Uh, we use the uh, absolute type encoders because uh, uh, we do not have to initialize the counter encoders. And the joint two and the four moves drastically, so it's very dangerous uh, when you start there uh, while studying. So, you know the ripple percent? Ripple? Ripple. Okay. Uh, the motor or? The solid state is that, right? Uh, Encoder or motor, which one? Oh, okay. The same reason that you can use the solid state that could be something which is everything impossible for revelation. Oh, we use the. Uh, as far as feedback, velocity, that's what you use to drop the encoder. Yes. Uh, we do not use the tap we, uh, we only use the uh, uh, optical shaft encoder. And uh, by computing the interval part, which gives you the uh what the ripple percentage is on the head say. Uh yes, we have uh, some ripple on the uh velocity measurement. That gives you the, some limitation of the amount of velocity feedback. And the uh the data I showed I showed you is the uh, in the condition that the uh we figure out the maximum allowable velocity feedback gain uh, based on the repo of the uh, measurement. And that gives you some limit. And the, uh, the, uh, we uh, evaluate the uh, velocity feedback measurement by the biggest response and the comparing the uh, time constant. I, I believe this, this velocity measurement is pretty good because the, uh, it improves the time constant up to three or four times more. So you use the encoder both for revolution and right. velocity? Right. Uh, what uh, is the higher revolution encoder? And uh, what is the uh, accuracy of the line? How many lines uh, per revolution used? Uh, please divide one revolution by 2 to the 13th. Right. Oh, uh, no, no, no. 
8,000. 8,000. 8,000. I take. 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 I in case of the wrist joint, in one to eight, uh, the shoulder first. But the core itself has thirteen. Yes. Yeah. So, so the good. resultant uh, uh, pulse density is uh, two to the uh, sixteen uh, pulsing power resolution. Would you use some daggers to the different? Uh, the um, hand, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, troublesome. <laughs> and they, uh, I think that the, uh, we are very careful about the publication here. So, so if you consider putting the encoder on the next day and just set a function to multiply to get the resolution rather than uh, the uh, Yeah, that's uh, it's much better. So the, the one of the problem is the uh, just imagine. Uh, top speed, top speed, a tick of the arm, and uh, we design, uh, design the speed is 4 meters per second in tick of the arm. Uh, because the uh, maximum uh, angular, angular velocity of uh, uh, the first joint is about 1 revolution per second. Uh, but it's uh, a little bit dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> All right.